Hi, there's a lot of uh, confusion on Kickstarter campaigns for those who want to run a Kickstarter campaign and what it's like sort of like behind the scenes to sort of manage the uh, project the campaign and things like that. So I've done a campaign on Kickstarter here. So I thought I'd give you a just a brief behind the scenes uh, tour of what it looks like to do uh, surveys. In fact, I'm going to do one right here live uh, to my backers of my project and show you some stats and things like that. So this is my project, the microcurrent uh, gold. I had, uh, I raised, I smashed my target. I raised 116,575 of my $9,900 gold with 1,268 backers. So it was a very successful project. And for those wondering, uh, the total fee, how much of that did I actually receive? Well, it was uh, that figure, 116575 minus just over 8%. Uh, Kickstarter charge a fixed uh, 5% fee, plus the credit card merchant took another 3.1%. I forget the exact figure, but it was around, it was just over 8%. So you really have to take that into account. That is a significant amount especially you know when you're trying to put a hardware product like this into production so just be careful now I've previously done a campaign on the Australian uh, website possible and the advantage of that apart from accepting uh, PayPal as well which is a major complaint I got from uh, Kickstarter not accepting PayPal is that once you reach your target in this case 9,900 the money went immediately into my account so I could start buying parts and things like that but on Kickstarter that wasn't the case I had to wait until the project ended on December 31st and then wait another two weeks precisely and Kickstarter truly to their word they said it would uh, they would pay me two weeks after and they did so on January 15th a hundred and uh, is something thousand dollars just appeared in my account in one big lump sum but by the way uh, it does work differently for Australians like me uh, because Australians and some other countries who uh, have Kickstarter available don't use the Amazon payment system so it could be very well different for uh, US uh, backers because they use the Amazon payment system whereas uh, uh, the Australian version of Kickstarter like I used they uh, use a third-party credit credit card uh, merchant and collect all the money themselves and then put it in one lump sum payment over to your bank account. Anyway, let's go in here and take a look at the dashboard. These are the stats that you get uh, behind the scenes here and uh, there's nothing uh, proprietary in here or anything like that and you can see my uh, funding goal I think it was a two-week uh, campaign or something I ran there yes December 16 December 31st and you can see it really kicked up at the start that's where you get most of your uh, sales at the start or at least if you have an established audience like me then it drops off flattens out and then at the end everyone realized oh I better get one before I miss out so they jumped in and sales ramped up a bit at the end there so uh, here's some um, stats if you're wondering the popularity of putting your project on Kickstarter well here's the actual figure it tells you via Kickstarter 22% uh, of my sales were directly via Kickstarter the rest come from came from external sites which you can see down here but I have a big established audience that's where most of my sales come from now I can't guarantee that that 22% slice of the pie there was just random people who didn't know about me or my project and were just searching Kickstarter it could have been uh, people who knew about me, knew about the project, and just didn't click through a link. They just went to Kickstarter and figure that and just uh, bought it through there but they already knew about me so they didn't just stumble across it so I'd you know a ballpark figure I'd probably halve that figure so maybe 10 or 12 percent maybe 15 percent extra sales I got for going through Kickstarter as opposed to another website perhaps but your mileage may vary greatly because I have a large established audience so uh, don't take my stat there as anything to go by but you can see direct traffic and then two, uh, 279 pledges there 262 pledges came from my website 211 came from my YouTube channel there uh, searching Kickstarter 87 percent hardware discover but once again I don't know uh, so there's 12 percent just there between searching 
uh, and uh, just general searching on Kickstarter. But as I said, I don't know if those people uh, already knew me or not and went in there. Then uh, Kick Track, that's a statistics website, 62%. So they claim, but I th- but I was publishing Kick Track stats. So possibly uh, some people jumped in th- and bought it through there. Twitter, 3%. I've got a large, uh, I've got 10,000 Twitter followers. So you know, 3% of my sales came through there. And then at my Amp Hour radio show, here I've got, I had an extra 10 sales through the link on that. Hack gadgets got mentioned on there and various stats. So you can see that down there. And you can see that only 38.26% of people actually finished playing my video. I can't remember how long my video was. I think it was five minutes or something like that. So obviously a lot of people started watching it. The majority started watching it and didn't actually finish. And then the popularity of my rewards and then the activities down the bottom. Now, if we go into the backer report over here, this is really quite nice. You can uh, list and sort and categorize all of your pledges. So, for example, here is just a, the uh, just a random list of rewards actually sent. So, I've already sent these ones here. I've actually ticked them off down here. I've manually ticked them off each one that I actually sent. So, I can actually go into uh, just the new ones, for example. Here's the new one, which I'm about to do my uh, campaign for, and then I can sort them based on uh, backer here, for example. Whoop. Yep, there we go. I can sort them based on that. So I can give, you know, so these people up here at the top who uh, contributed first, I can make sure that they get those ones first, uh, for example. So that's really quite neat. And then once you've um, sorted all this, you know, you can select your rewards, sort them, various things. Then you can just go up here and you can message all of your backers as well. But you can go in here and export it. And here it is, export backer report production run and you can choose which one you want to do. There we go, that's really quite nice. So I want it, let's say I wanted to get all of my mail-in address labels, for example, even though I haven't sent out my survey yet, I'll explain that in a minute, but I can export, even now, all that stuff, it's ready to download. There it is, and you can do this. The good thing about this is that you can generate this as many times as you like. So Kickstarter backer report, there it is. It puts it in a standard CSV format, and you can just load that directly into um, any spreadsheet program, and it works perfectly. Then I was able to import that data directly into my Dymo label printer and print out my addresses. Very, very easy. I love this feature of Kickstarter. It worked much better than I was expecting. Now, here we go. I'm actually going to do a real survey here. I haven't done it before because you here's one of the disadvantages of Kickstarter. You only get one shot at doing a what they call a survey, which is basically sending out and asking people for their information. This is one aspect of Kickstarter I don't like as opposed to uh, Posible, which I've used before the Australian site, uh, because you have to create an account on Posible and give your address details. So you always got people's address d- details from the start. So yeah, I didn't really like that aspect of uh, Kickstarter. I wanted to know up front, you know, how many countries my uh, things were going to uh, that I had to ship to, for example. But anyway, here we go. Where let's go into manage surveys. And I had heard horror stories about these surveys. And there's all these third-party companies out there that have sprung up. And when you put a project on Kickstarter, they will email you and ask you, "Hey, you know, Kickstarter's a nightmare. Do you want to give us one percent of your money, and we will, you know, hand we'll give you this magic tool that handles all your surveys and everything else?" Well, I found that would have been a waste of money for my uh, purposes because I found the exports, the survey system, easily a- a- easy, as we'll see, and also. Uh, the uh, act of exporting the uh, CSV address data, really easy. So here we go. Anyway, we have our 199 backers, so I want to create a survey. Here we go. So I will create a survey like this, and this is exactly what it looks like, and I have to concentrate, make sure I get it right. Now this is a new feature, let backers change their address. This was not here the other month when I did my other survey. If we hover over there, if you are not shipping for a while, you can let backers change their address in case they move. You can close this later when you're ready to ship. Awesome. This was one of the big disadvantages of Kickstarter in that if you sent out your survey early, you know, a couple of months early and people change their addresses, you were screwed. Then you had to manually fix those up. So really, there's not much advantage for these third-party 
programs anymore. They let you do that. But anyway, I'm going to ship pretty quick. So I'm probably going to leave that off and any change of address I'll just handle manually. I don't expect much. But here we go. It's the preview they've already put in uh, by default is shipping details. So name, address one, address two so two lines for the address that's adequate city state province zip code and country so people will see this form exactly like this or you can add questions in like this you can add a specific question and you can get an answer like that but i want to oh, i don't i probably shouldn't have done that i might go back out and uh uh, disable that because I don't really want to add or you can add multiple choice questions like this but I don't really want to add any questions I just want people's names and addresses so I'll go back out and fix that so here we go I'm back in and I've uh, I just cancelled I'm back in and I'm happy with all this default address information I used it last time it was certainly adequate I got no uh, complaints it imported into my uh, label program very nicely and everything was hunky-dory so that's a good set of options for international uh, international is important for Australian uh, shippers like me who you know need to ship internationally and the uh, fields are ideal so I'm happy with that it works well so I'm just gonna go send survey it's done so I'm gonna send out to those 199 backers at that tier only okay so because I've got these units they're here in my uh, lab here re tested ready to ship so I need people's uh, addresses so I'm going to send that survey here we go send you can only send a survey once per reward tier so make sure you ask for all the info you need well all I need is people's addresses that's it so send survey now bingo it's done there's no going back and that is one of the huge disadvantages so this is what here here's the screen this is what people will see they will have these fields they will uh, import uh, they will uh, set that data in so they'll be sent an email asking them to uh, with a link to go to the website to fill in this the survey has been sent address change is not allowed but I can edit that later so that's really good and then we can go back into the backer report and now if we have a look at the reward tier here first production run there we go we have a look at that tier there now if I sit here and wait long enough um, <laughs> in you know within 10 minutes I'll have the first people start there'll be a tick there the survey response bang just like I had for my other ones my early signature editions here it tells me that that person that person so this will update live so you can see I'll, over the next couple of hours next day I'll see people that have uh, entered in their survey response and then I can message those who haven't done it so that works really well I've got no complaints almost no complaints at all apart from only being able to send it once of the survey system uh, in Kickstarter and I heard all these horror stories that I had to use these third-party tools that I got absolutely spammed with you have to use our tool because Kickstarter is so awful hey it's not I think it worked well at least for my purposes anyway and there you go I literally just uh, stopped recording that segment and refresh the page and look I've already had five people fill in their address details fantastic so you can just sit well you have to refresh it of course it won't automatically refresh but that's great there we go got five addresses already for those I could ship those right now and here's a quick look inside my imported data into my spreadsheet from that exported CSV file which that CSV file as I said you can export as many times as you want over and over again as the uh, as the people's addresses come in or right at the last minute just in case they've changed it backer ID here um, I've, ta I've removed people's names and email addresses but the data would be there of course uh, international and domestic uh, their pledge amount the date and whether it was collected the server when the survey was answered uh, and then you all got all that uh, format data which they entered in once again I've actually removed this and you know there could be hundreds of uh, these things or thousands of these things if you had enough backers in that particular category so there you go all the data is there as shipping country so you can sort by shipping country because you know, when I'm doing domestic and international I want to sort by the various countries and things like that so that's really handy and once you've got that data into your spreadsheet 
easy. You can do whatever you want. And I can just import that easily into my uh, label printer or give the Excel file to the mailing house. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, behind the scenes look at uh, the management of a Kickstarter project. And it worked. I had, you know, I was really fearful because I heard some real horror stories of people who had, from people who had run it before and said, oh, the survey was such a nightmare and ah, oh, you're just going to be, you know, uh, pulling your hair out. But I wasn't. It, I got my address. All I wanted, because I want to ship these units, is get my address data into a uh, standard CSV format, import into a spreadsheet. Then I can play around with it, sort it, categorize it into different countries and things like that, and then export to my label printer or give to my mailing house. That's all I wanted, and it did exactly what I wanted. So. In the end, um, yeah, Kickstarter had quite a few uh, uh, quirks and uh, other things in terms of uh, formatting of the uh, project. For example, like there's no formatting ability over in these pledges over here. It's just very archaic. It's, you know, uh, I didn't really like that. But in the end, ultimately, the management uh, stuff behind it worked pretty well. So there you go. I had no problems, really, essentially, no problems with Kickstarter. So if you want to discuss this, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. That's the place to do it. Catch you next time.